Good morning everyone, welcome back to the Laura Creates Knitting Podcast. Thanks for joining me today, um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, welcome back to those of you who have subscribed, it's been so exciting to enter the community. So this is my second podcast um, and I've been so warmly welcomed by so many of you. Um, so welcome back if you're a subscriber, which seems insane to say, um, and welcome to the channel if you're someone who is just joining us. My name is Laura, I am 27 years old and I live in Copenhagen, Denmark, but I come from Australia. Um, I've been knitting for a while now and yeah, let's just get into what we have on the program today. So um, I'll start with some finished objects um, and uh, yeah, we can take it from there. So this is um, what I'm currently wearing is my first finished object. It's my Lento um, and my ent entry into the Let's Lento Cal being run by Rebecca of Crea Bia and Amy Palco. Um, I um, knit mine in one strand of drops brushed alpaca. This is uh, brushed alpaca silk in the color um, 11, I believe. Yep, in the color 11. Um, I have a lot of this left, but I already know what I want to do with it, um, and I can share that with you a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so I did a kind of um, three quarter length bracelet length sleeve so it kind of yeah grows and shrinks a little bit depending on what I'm um, doing. Um, the Lento sweater is a uh, raglan um, very basic sweater. I'll sit in some footage of me somewhere <laughs> wearing it. Um, I have knit it to kind of my perfect length again. Um, I shared last uh, podcast but um, I am allergic to cropped sweaters I can't wear cropped sweaters but um, I don't always enjoy a, a full-length sweater either so I kind of like this between cropped and full length where it really sits right on like my high-waisted jeans or a little bit below so um, hopefully you can see that on the little um, footage of me here wearing it um, the fabric is let's see if we can get it to focus on that but the fabric is super soft and fluffy it's quite like holy um but i don't like i, I don't mind that being alpaca um it's still quite warm like i i'm just wearing this over a t-shirt and i'm the perfect temperature for being inside um and uh, living somewhere that's cold everywhere is really well heated um obviously not as well heated this year with the energy crisis but usually well heated so you don't need lots of like thick really woolly layers inside so this is the perfect sweater for work or um, anything like that um, because I knit it in the brushed alpaca the neckline is very um, stretchy so I am thinking about putting some elastic in here but I'm gonna wear it for a little while and see um, because I just love how soft and drapey this fabric is and honestly it's so soft it's not itchy at all I have a couple of like only mohair garments and they can be quite itchy but this is just it's like heaven <laughs> but yes I did make quite a holy fabric this um, wool was definitely not did not match the recommended wool for the pattern um, I did not gauge swatch but I did try it on as I was knitting which is what I usually do so that's my first finish object. Moving on to the second finish object. It is two socks. I mean, I only finished one of them. One of them has been, um, this is the world's loneliest sock. Uh, I've named it the world lo world's loneliest sock because it went a whole year without a friend. Um, but now I've finished both of them. This is knit in the uh, Regea uh, Perfect design by Anna and Carlo in I think I've written it down it's 09090 colorway the f um yeah the first time colorway um my mum bought me this wool um it's self-striping uh it's a really great wool for beginners because it kind of helps you to keep going and and it's adds some excitement and then 
it tells you exactly when you should start the heel and toe just depending on like the color change um so yeah i love these i can't wait to wear them i've been keeping them nice and fresh for you guys i have done a um heel uh, heel flap and gusset uh and I followed the Winwick Mum Sock Along pattern, which is the pattern that I use for all my socks, um, pretty much. So that's very exciting. Socks off and ready to be worn. Um, the next finished object is something that I hadn't even cast on in the last podcast, although I did talk about it. Um, I uh, have a friend who is expecting a baby in March, so next month. Um, and um, I was thinking of making like a little jumpsuit or a romper or something but I was talking with her and I think she would have she said she would prefer something that was um, that didn't cover the bum area um, I think yeah it's she's a second time mum so I think she knows what she's talking about so <laughs> I chose a cardigan pattern it's still a little bit wet because I just finished washing it and blocking it last night I know I blocked something which is pretty impressive for me but this is the um, it's by Nits Du Noir and I can't remember the name of the pattern it's completely it's by Nits Du Noir. I will put the pattern name somewhere on the screen. I'm so sorry. Um, but it's this beautiful uh, lace design cardigan. I've knitted in the size, just with basic arms, so cute. I've knitted in the size uh, three to six months. So it'll be a good like cardigan for kind of the summer months here when it's not so warm. Um, and yep, it's, um, I did make a few changes to the actual pattern, so the pattern calls for twisted rib. I don't love twisted rib, I don't enjoy knitting it, but I actually don't enjoy the look of it. I have, um, very even tension, I've always had very even tension pretty much as a knitter, like, I, I feel like that you can nearly not see any variegation in my knitting, which I'm very grateful for. <laughs> Um, but for some reason in twisted rib it always looks like I don't have the right tension there's something wrong and um, I also don't really enjoy the the look that it creates so I swapped out all the ribbing all the ribbing should have been actually only half twisted rib so the uh, knit stitches should have been twisted I swapped those out and just did plain ribbing um, which I think is very yeah which is great I think that's what you need <laughs> um, and then um, it also has the original pattern has eyelet increases at the raglan increases so they create like a hole um, but I have knit this probably should have said that already in drops merino extra fine uh, superwash yarn in the color 505 um, I have a lot of this. I used it to knit a cardigan, to knit the Ingrid sweater junior for this new baby's older brother. Um, and so I had a lot of it left over. Um, and I still have three and a half balls left. This used two and a half ish balls of the Drops Merino Extra Fine. Um, and I, um, I didn't like the way the eyelet increases at the raglan looked in this wool. I think sometimes superwash, because I mean it gives great stitch definition in the lace, but these holes are quite large, <laughs> and I felt like the holes were too big here. So I just swapped them out for a rib, like for the kind of original make one left one make one right. So that's this cardigan by um, Nits Du Noir. Um, which is a beautiful pattern. It was so quick to knit and I think it was just because it like the lace pattern was exciting and it kept you going. It's a four stitch repeat so I just always wanted to do, I'll just do four more like, like rows. Um, and I have no, nothing against purling. I just love, I love both knitting and purling. I think that they're 
equally as fast for me and I don't usually get too annoyed by purling a lot so yeah this was a really fast easy knit um, yes uh, in terms of the buttons <laughs> there's a fabric store here called um, it was called stuff and steel and now I think it's called self-made they've just changed their name um, but I bought these buttons there um, I didn't have six of the same because I didn't really want to have to go out and buy more buttons so I actually have just like a very basic little flower button at the top and then the other five buttons on the pattern are just these circular yeah kind of white buttons so yes I'll have to go and put that back to finish drying so that is all my finished objects for today. Um, next I have, I only have two whips. One of them is a gift, so I will talk about it at the very end. Um, and I've got a couple of plants, so I think it's gonna be a short-ish episode today. Um, but, um, first of all, this sweater is one of my first ever knits it was kind of my first you know that kind of adult pattern you know it was kind of the first pattern that was a raglan and was still knit on quite big needles but was not knit with a bulky wool um and it is this sweater number nine by my favorite things knitwear um, and it is knit in yadigan lima in the bright blue colorway and it was actually really hard to get my hands on i copied this jumper completely from a girl on uh, Instagram who I absolutely love her color palette I'll put her little <laughs> a picture of her her screen name here I can never remember the names I'm so bad but um, yes I absolutely love this jumper I have had it for 18 months or so it was kind of the when I jumped into garment knitting maybe a little bit longer but um, the wool hasn't held up great it's a quite pilly, um, but I think that's kind of what you expect when you make just a wool garment that has no mohair in it. So this was made in a worsted weight wool. Um, pretty much I love everything about this. The colour is incredible. I'll put some footage of me wearing it here. Um, the colour is totally incredible. I have had... Um, but I do have a few things about it that I no, don't love and that is first and foremost the collar is like just a little bit too long and so I always have to have this kind of rolled over and it's not designed to be rolled over and the kind of I really don't enjoy the look of the back of the 2 by one rib and the front of the 2 by one rib um, so um, I've always wanted to knit another one, but I wanted to knit it uh, with a shorter collar. And then the other thing was, this was before I learned about like stretchy car stuff. And like these were the stretchiest car stuffs I could do and they're not very stretchy at all. I think it's just casting off in pattern um, and it's the same at the bottom. So like getting this on can be a bit of a struggle. Like there's literally no stretch in that like compared to the rest of the jumper. Um, so I really love this pattern. I love the design feature of the um, raglan on it as well. So I really wanted to knit another one of these at some point. Um, and I have been wanting to knit a black jumper. And black jumpers don't really fit my wardrobe in terms of what I usually go for, but I have a lot of bright colored pants. And I, I did mention in the last episode that I was thinking about knitting something neutral, um, but I'm not really into light neutrals, so black for me is a staple probably in my wardrobe. And so I had some wool that I had bought to make the Terrazzo sweater by Petit Knit. But the more I looked at that pattern online, the more I realize that I don't think I'm the biggest fan of the drop shoulder design. It's quite boxy and the the neck is like very, it's very signature, you know, like this, this really big rolled neck, um, which I thought is what I wanted, but then I realized that probably isn't what I wanted. So 
I had this wool and I've been thinking about it for a while, what I want to do with it, what, what are the, whether it should be the terrazzo sweater, which I bought it for, or if I should try and find something else. And the other night I went to bed and I had been knitting all night, so I was just thinking about knitting. And I literally wake up, woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I was like, sweating up a nine. <laughs> so the wool that I have is from Bendigo Woolen Mills in Australia. It is the 10 ply premium, oh luxury, sorry, just in the black colorway. It's 100% wool um, and it's in these massive balls. Like I've never seen wool balls this big before. Um, it's a 200 gram ball of yarn uh, approximately 300 meters per ball. So I have four of these, which I think is going to be too much for the sweater that I'm knitting. So I will have some left over, but then I was thinking I could always make the um, terrazzo neck instead, um, which is also knit in the same gauge. So, I mean gauge, in the same weight yarn. So I cast on, it was one of those projects that kind of lived in your brain and you just had to get it out. So I cast this on actually only last night. Um, but it knits up so quickly and of course it's black so it's going to be hard to show um, but oh no maybe you can see it so I've got the I finished the oh, let's hold those needles I finished the um, neckline which I shortened by three centimeters um, and have started the raglan increases um, which I think yeah this is just going to be a black sweater so it's like it, the details of the sweater are probably not going to pop that much, but I do really like the detail of this raglan. Um, and I really like the way it's knitting up. I think actually it's less, it's in the same worsted weight. So again, this is not the suggested, actually I don't think I said it, but this is not the suggested yarn for the pattern. I believe that the pattern actually calls for a worsted weight with a mohair, so it could should be thicker. Um, and this is like quite, it's not a holy fabric, but there's, there are quite big, yeah, gaps in the, in the, in the, like the one I have here. It's like, yeah, it's not too bad, but yeah, it, it is, you know, there are larger holes in it. Um, so I was worried about that, but I think because this is the luxury, um, 10 ply, it's a bit like more plump and I feel like the holes in this one are really not big at all in comparison to the other ones. So you can see like it's quite a flat knit. Um, I did an Italian cast on for this one, a tubular cast on, which I don't know if that's the right thing to do when you're going to go into two by one rib, but I don't mind the way that it looks. I think it looks quite neat. There we go. Um, and I plan on doing tubular cast offs as well on this pattern um, to get more stretch because this is already like way, way stretchier. Um, and I'm really looking forward to having it as a wardrobe staple. Um, but as I said, black is not my usual color palette. I'm into very bright colors. So um, I think this is like more of a product knit, which I don't often do. I'm very much a process knitter. So um, at least I really like this pattern and I wanted to do it again with some changes to the original pattern. So let's go with that and hope that it's, it's good. Um, next I have... Um, the gift knit, which I'm going to keep till the end. So let's move on to some plants, um, knitting plants. So I said that I had some plants for this, uh, the brushed alpaca silk in the color 11, which is the leftovers from this sweater. I have been seeing forever and I absolutely love them. The little very famous kind of frog pattern. I think it's from Dot Pebbles. Um, that's her Instagram name anyway. And um, I'm going to use this, probably hold it quite maybe double or triple stranded to make sure that it doesn't like thing. it's quite thick. Um, but I'm going to use this to make that. I also have some leftover white sock wool from my uh, from my sheep socks <laughs> um, and I have some um, white mohair which I got from a friend at work I just sent out in our kind of knitting group 
um, if anybody had some leftover white note mohair and she did so I have some white mohair um, as well which I'm going to use to make the frog I don't know if this is going to be like a very immediate cast on but I'm very excited about it I think it could be a good summer project so uh, that's what I'll be doing then I have um, I have this wool which I've had in my stash for a long time. I originally bought it to make a some presents, to make some um, accessories for some friends, um, but that never happened and I decided that I didn't think the colour was right for them anyway and um, yeah, but this is quite expensive wool. Um, which I bought a long time ago, but it is the is a uh, alpaca two in this beautiful rust color. Um, the color is number thirty three. Um, it is a beautiful fifty percent alpaca, fifty percent wool. Um, 50 grams is approximately 250 meters um, and I bought this together with sorry, I'm gonna put this back in here so I don't lose it <laughs> I bought the matching alpaca one because at that time I did not like knitting with mohair I found that this it was a bit sensory overload <laughs> to knit with mohair so I was using mostly an alpaca strand instead um, so this is the Isaiah Alpaca one. Um, again, this one is 100% alpaca, uh, 400 meters to 50 grams. And together they're kind of the perfect match. I mean, they're, yeah. This one is also color 33. So they're exactly the same color according to the Isaiah color charts. This, I have exactly 800 grand 800 meters of this um alpaca two and i am loving this um lento sweater that i've made and i'm thinking i'm going to make another lento this has been sitting in my stash for like two years so it would be really exciting to get it out of my stash i don't have a huge stash but i do have a rule about like the stash can't be bigger than the cupboard that it's currently living in and um, I'd really like to move this into a garment that I can wear as well as being able to free up some space in the cupboard for, for future yarns. Um, so this is going to be a Lento. The Lento sweater is um, a liner magazine sweater and um, yeah, I made it. I made this one and I love it and I'm going to make another one um, in this year. So that's a future plan. Um, and then my other future plan is um, a... Also, I got this wool from Bendigo Woolen Mills. It's the Luxury 8-ply this time. Um, and in Amazon green color. Again, it's 200 grams, but um, approximately 400 meters because it is a four ply, uh, sorry, an eight ply instead of a 10 ply or a DK instead of a worsted. So I um, bought this in Australia. So I went and visited my family in uh, November, December when my sister got married which was very exciting and I had set an order with Bendigo Woolen Mills um, because they have very affordable very beautiful yarns and I really wanted to knit some things with them so I hadn't tried it before but my mum is a huge Bendigo Woolen Mills fan so um, I ordered some wool and then it was there when I got there and then I brought it home with me so um, I have this both in the 8-ply and the 10-ply. The 10-ply I plan to make a Teresa neck, um, so that is still the plan with that when I get to it, but this wool, I think of making a grow hat by Fiber Tails. Um, I absolutely love her pattern, it's so beautiful, um, and I think I have enough here to make two of the hats, and so I was thinking I could have one and then I would like to send one to my mum. 
yeah so that's the plan with this one and I am hoping to cast those on maybe after I finish the black sweater this can be kind of the next cast on um, but yeah we'll wait and see I have one sewing plan that I also wanted to share with you guys um, mostly because I absolutely love this fabric again I bought it in Australia from um, spotlight stores um, and it is a duck um, and I am planning on making a um, it's so cute look at this <laughs> I love it so much. Um, I am planning on making a um, skirt. Well, actually a score. So shorts with a um, front kind of flap that goes over it. I've made the shorts component of this pattern already. And the pattern is... Um, ooh, I'm going to have to look that up. Hold on. Bear with. I don't know if any of you have seen Miranda, but that is a Miranda reference. <laughs> um, and it is... So it's by um, Kiana Bonolo. And it is the... She has just a squat pattern. So it's, it's just a very plain um, pattern. I will put the picture of it up here. Um, and yes, I plan on making that out of this because I think it's going to go perfectly with my black sweater and then also with my um my this sweater i think they match quite well so um that's the plan with this i have way more fabric than i need for that pattern um because i had originally planned on making a dress but i have just become obsessed with skirts and i need some kind of summer um, transitional pieces so I was thinking that I could definitely make some cuter project bags out of what's left over um, and possibly even other skirts other tops who knows but but the plan is to make that squat pattern um, and hopefully soon because I would love to wear it with my black sweater and also with the lento that I'm planning on knitting so that's some sewing plans okay the final piece to talk about is the um, gift knit so if you are my dad and you have made it this far through the video which I don't expect but if you are you should stop watching here thank you for joining us today um, so I have um, decided to knit my dad a sweater for his birthday this year my dad is a big guy um, like just physically his uh, <laughs> He's nearly two meters tall, so it's going to be a huge project to make this sweater. Um, but I have cast on, and I'm absolutely loving the sweater, like the the pattern. It's very Moorish, which is very good. Like the that is a that's what you want in a sweater that you know is going to be a big labor of love. Um, so I have cast on the Coarse Hound sweater, Man by Striga Cafe. Like a cafe and I have got this square which doesn't seem like very far at all but in my dad's size there is 208 stitches around so per round so it took a very long time to make the ribbing and to even begin the stitch pattern but as I said the stitch pattern is very Moorish I knit two and a half of these basket weave patterns yesterday um, and it wasn't the only thing I was working on so I think that it's going to be doable um, but yes let's show you a bit closer up of this basket weave pattern let's stretch it out a bit so it has got these kind of holes in it um, and yes just like a classic basket weave design I just thought it was super interesting it had a Italian cast on which 208 stitches of Italian cast on I was like I'll never do it but I managed to do it <laughs> and then it has a large ribbing this is worked from the bottom up um, which I very much dislike bottom up sweaters but this one is working out fine um, it is knit in drops alas yes in the colorway 15 which is this beautiful kind of mel like 
mixed blue color with a bit of kind of white fiber in it um, it does say it's a uni color but I don't think it is it's quite um, it's more rustic than some of the other wools from um, drops but it's not I don't think it's gonna be too rustic um, the only thing about this wool like I, I it's really easy to work with it's a beautiful color it feels it feels again like rustic but like a proper wool sweater it's it's beautiful like it's actually quite a nice wool to work with but I have had so many knots these balls are very small for what they like for what you're getting so it's only 70 meters in each ball so I'm spending a lot of time changing balls anyway like I've already used three balls uh, well nearly three balls yeah nearly three balls for this part of the card like of the sweater already but I've been having a lot of issues with like knots in the wool I don't know if you can see that little oh that little guy there but like multiple knots in each ball which is driving me insane because I hate knitting in ends and I know that I'm gonna have to knit in so many ends because I literally keep finding like I think I have let's count I have one two so I have three of these knots that were like not possible to just knit into the wool like three of them already in the three balls um which means i've already got like six joins or six like yeah six six pairs of ends to knit in and that's going to drive me insane if that keeps on happening so i'm going to keep going with this wool because i really like it i'm also concerned that i'm not going to have enough wool because if i have to keep giving a little bit extra for the for the knots in the balls, I'm going to be losing more and more of the length in it. So let's cross our fingers and hope that we're able to, yeah, do, yeah, that we're, we're just able to do this. <laughs> that is in, in what I have. So I think I have, I have a lot of balls. I think I bought 24 balls um, because that's what I should have for the pattern. Maybe it's 26. But I've got a lot of balls, but I've already used three, so I think we're going to have to wait and see how we go. Um, luckily, being a, a large producer of wool, I am hoping that if I had to order some more, that they would match. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments section down below. It was so exciting to get the few comments that I got on my last video. Um, I absolutely, yeah, it was just so fun. It's fun to see where you guys are from, what you're what, where you're watching from. Um, I, in Copenhagen, I'm part of a very kind of international community. There's a very big international community here in Copenhagen. And um, I really love the fact that this is also like such an international place to be. And um, we can be watching each other from different sides of the world. So that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll be back in a few weeks with some more progress on the gift nets. And then, um, yeah, we will see how far we get on everything else. Thank you.